Welcome back. Well, yes, we'll be talking about that and uh, sundry matters. We've got uh, Margaret Oguntala, who is an engineer. She's also a fellow, Nigerian Society of Engineers, Nigerian Institution of Environmental Engineers, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, and Nigerian Institute, no, that's the Institute of Management Consultant. It's still in Nigeria, <laughs> so it all works. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. It's well, nice to see you. yes, and looking at some of, I mean, that unfortunate scenario, yes, it raises concern. Yeah. But when you sit back and look at the whole matter, you tend to wonder, is it the kind of concern, you know, that uh, makes sure or sees real steps taken to ensure that this kind of things don't happen again? Because it's not the first. Uh, the last time it happened, many thought, okay, well, hopefully that won't happen again before this one. So how does that come across to you? Well, the, the, uh, first I must say that uh, this is a very unfortunate uh, thing to happen. Uh, one would think that by now, things like this would not be happening in Nigeria, particularly because of the, the kind of competent engineers that we do have. However, um, I, I guess the reason why it keeps happening is, uh, I mean, normally when investigations are done, um, to ascertain the cost, immediate and um, remote causes of this kind of uh, collapse, it's expected that the recommendations will be adhered to, you know, uh, arising from the investigation. And if the, uh, the citizens and the people concerned, everybody concerned, actually takes um, to, I mean, takes the, uh, the advice of the, of the professionals who have carried out the investigations, then it will not be happening. So I think the reason why it's, it continues to happen is that people continue to flout rules. And who are these people that continue to flout rules? They, 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 okay, we have, for instance, this particular um, structure was being uh, done by uh, a developer. I mean, I'm sure most of us are developers. You have your own house, so you are a developer, but you should engage professionals. And then where things are not done properly, from uh, it could be from the, the soil, it could be from the structural design, it could be from uh, materials, bad materials and such. So everybody who does any, who, who takes, um, takes on any kind of, kind of project is somebody who is responsible. It's responsible to, um, the, to, to, it's responsible to the extent of ensuring that uh, this kind of thing does, does not happen. But how does the uh, narrative of um, developers flouting the advice of developers of engineers come in because one would have thought that the engineers are supposed to protect the developer even against his own instincts. Sure. Well, you, you know, sometimes, um, to start with, it is not even all the time that the prof developers use professionals. Now, in, the, in, in instances where they do, some of them really still don't listen. For instance, in this particular matter, I, I mean, there are stories, and I think it's been confirmed, that the structural engineer resigned at some point, you know, because he was not happy with what was going on, because the developer was not adhering or taking to his advice. He's, he's the one who has the money. And a number of times, we have had cases where the, the structural engineer will recommend a particular material, mm. and then the developer will say, ah, somebody told me that I can use something less, and it will give me the same result. In terms of following the rules, uh, do you think that if that story that you said is correct, as some have said it's, it, it is, do you think that fellow, the structural engineer or consultant, whatever, followed the rules? I think he did. Because if you, if, if you got a job from, you have a client who is not listening to you, then what you should do is to resign. But one of the things that we also heard is that when you do that, you ought to speak to the state government, at least to the authorities, to ensure that that is done. Uh, well, that's, that's what is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. But we also know, we also know the reality of, or, I mean, of hu the human behavior. The, the, everybody, the first instinct of every human being is to protect himself. And when you are dealing with people who have um, people in high places, you also try to be careful. A lot of things happen in Nigeria now and all over the world. So people tend to, one would think that the man would feel, well, even, even though this is what I'm supposed to do, report to the state government, I, think, I also think I should protect myself. That's so, my view. 
So of, what makes uh, him of a, what, he what, what makes them professionals then? Well, what makes him a professional is that he, he has he resigned and he made it public. And you will see that on the board, at least from what we have seen, the the, the name and the the phone number of the of the structural engineer were actually removed and cancelled. That means he was no longer officially on that job. And that's, so, uh, I, I yeah, think... You know, I ask that because, I mean, if the professionals and their ethics, their rules, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter what you have, whoever godfather thinks, the profession is the profession. The profession should not be subservient to the whims and caprices of the godfather, whoever is in a high place. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Well, that's what it's supposed to be, theoretically, really. But you, you and I know that in the end, the survival instinct really comes forth in this kind of situation. And I think, essentially, the first thing that the professional needs to do is what that guy has done. He resigned his... Uh, yeah, but, but the question his, about his that resignation is, did they follow the standard procedure? Because, I mean, they say, even though there's a panel independent on to look at that and yes. come up with their recommendation, sure. as it should be, mm -hmm. but uh, the thing is, if, you, if they, one claims they resigned, and the processes and steps are not adhered to. Can it be considered, can it be deemed as resignation? Well, if the investigations show that the processes were not, um, were not followed, due process was not followed, then maybe. Do, do you but know until this? we know that, for sure, really, I, I think that it will suffice that the man actually felt that what was going on, and, and I'm, sure, I'm sure that before he even resigned, he must have had a series of meetings with the clients. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> Did you know the person, for instance, the company? That I, I didn't. That's why I said he must have. And that's why we all agree that if in the, eventually it is discovered that he did resign and he followed the due process. The due process is somebody employs you. If, if you are employed by, if you have an employer who's not doing what you're supposed, what you expect of him, you give him advice and he doesn't take to your advice, what you do, you resign. So well, that's the basic thing to do. Well, clearly, this is not only within the industry, building mm -hmm. and construction industry. It also involves government. Sure. But in the building and construction industry, there are professionals, both in the private sector and in the government side. Uh, it then raises a lot of questions about how professional the professionals themselves have been, both within government and on the sites. Uh, what, what, what are they think? What, what can you say about that? Because there are those who are also raising questions as to the people who are officials of government, some of them are also members of some of these institutions you sure. know, that you are a fellow of. Sure. Uh, some of them good engineers, as you have said, professionals uh, like yourself. So one wonders if there is supposed to be monitoring, there's supposed to be due process and all those things. Two of the three buildings are standing, one of them is down. At what point did we drop the, the, the ball, so to speak? To, to the extent that this happened, and there are loss of lives. Yes, I, I think there's, there, there are some gaps, really, in the, in the, um, in the monitoring. I will, I, I will say that there must, be, there must have been gaps, because, um, you see, there's a lot that goes into this kind of thing. But again, um, until <laughs> investigations are fully carried out, you know, one can't say mm -hmm. exactly what happened. Correct. So, that for now, I would think that we should just wait Let's carry out the proper investigation. Um, just um, two days ago, the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria set up an inquiry, which consists of members of all the, the environment, the built environment, architects, um, um, structural engineers, and uh, you know, consultants, and, and all of them. Mm. And it is expected that at the end of the inquiry, all, some of these questions that we ask now will be answered. Okay. And well, then we'll be able to know exactly. So it's, it, so that, that's well, yeah, the, 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 the A number of um, professionals such as yourself who, are, who we have had to um, interface with on this issue have raised the issue of um, compromise of materials, saying that uh, some 12 mm has become 10, 10 mm and all of that. So I'm wondering, uh, what's the role of the profession, the experts in the profession, in ensuring the standards. If, for instance, the standards organization of Nigeria is not you know, playing its role, what's the role of the professionals? The role of the professional is actually to, to maintain standards you know, of materials used at every But the standards have compromised. We, we are not so sure now. That's why I said, okay. look, for now, I think we should just wait. Because those are speculations. 
I mean, we, nobody, nobody has gone to, to check all of that. As a matter of fact, Korean is now not even looking at just the Colas building. Uh, the, it, the Korean has ordered that integrity be, tests be done on even the standing structures, just to be sure that, well, that kind of thing is not going to happen to any one of them. So I, I think we, we, we all should just wait a bit. We should just tarry a bit in our conclusions and let's see what comes out. And then I'm sure it's very soon. I mean, we'll all find out what happened. After all, when we have plane, plane, when there's plane crash, they will tell you until they find the black box. They wouldn't know what happened, and they would not tell you anything until they find the black box. Black box. So I think in this situation too, we all need, just need to be a bit more patient. Do you think we have enough confidence in Nigerian society of engineers, for instance, as a country? Well, it depends on how you look at it. I think I'm an engineer, so but as a country. I believe that we do have um, a lot of confidence in the Nigerian engineer. No, However, what, what do they do in this, why else? this kind of scenario? The NSC. The, the NSC, <coughs> the NSC is um, the, the current that I said uh, that has formed the, um, that's just constituted the inquiry, is, mm -hmm. is, uh, is a regulatory body made of engineers. So yeah, that's, the, the role of the, that's the role of the engineers in this. And the Nigerian set of engineers, the, the, the president just last week, mm. you know, has, was on air to also discuss the fact, our role, and what we're doing to ensure that we've, we get to the bottom of this matter, and we make recommendations that will ensure that this kind of thing does not happen in, anymore. Because, I mean, when uh, prevention, of course, is always better sure. than this kind of scenario. Exactly. So one wonders, what do they do when all of those buildings are going up? Because we've seen them in different states, and that's why the question arises. So uh, when they come up with all of these recommendations, what's the assurance that at the end of the day, they will step up their actions and perhaps do a lot more in prevention as opposed to just doing this afterwards? Well, what we do in prevention is, is that our members, really, wherever they find themselves, and I think it could be one of the reasons why the structural engineer felt, look, I'm out of here. You know, so what, what we do is to ensure, we, we have what we call the engineering regulation and monitoring of Corin, And uh, we go to sites, you know, and especially there are times when we even get information, you know, maybe anonymous sometimes, you know, because people also are being careful. And then we go to such sites, we visit, we, make, we do inspection, and then we, we ensure that the, right, the rules are being followed. Did you get so anyone about we this? We didn't bill? get any of this. We did not. So we what, do that. What about when the letter was circulating? When he was said to have, been re to have resigned? The letter did, did not he... come to us. It did not come to current. So no member of current got any no, idea the current of what as a was council going? did not. So uh, I wouldn't know if any member got, but current as a, I'm a member of the council. Would, no. you, would, you, would you have expected the structural engineer that you said resigned, for instance, would you have expected that kind of person to maybe bring that case to the industry? To maybe, to... maybe, maybe he should, you know, because he will be protected, you know. But, you know, it's all, like I said, it's, they are still, everything is still in the speculation stage right now, so... Just well, maybe should. Yeah. Well, you we understand. You you you're vying to become president of NSC, for instance. Is this part of? <laughs> is this how this is going to be moving forward? What's going to change? Why no. do you even want to to, to lead the <laughs> NSC? Well, <laughs> you, you know, um, to start with, I'll tell you that I, I'm actually vying, but I'm not expected to. The the our ethics don't allow um, campaign. campaign. So. So no, it's not campaign, <laughs> just what's wondering but what, what drives the, the, you know, the NSC, okay. what they do, and what, what the think, leadership what does. Di what difference you think I can make? Because now people are asking, so what's the point of NSC? They're there and buildings are collapsing. Well, the buildings are collapsing, not due to the negligence of NSC, really, I would say. The NSC on its part, does, uh, we, we have the objectives of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and they are basically... Uh, to um, see to the professional development of the, of, its, of the members, see to the welfare of the members, and also act as um, an advisory body to the government. Now, all, all of these, the Nigerian Society of Engineers does. But I also say something, and I, I think uh, Chief Olusha Gobasa just said it at some point. He said, you are my special advisor, but you can advise me, but I don't have to take your advice. You, you know, that kind of thing. So, the, the Nigerian set of engineers, on its part, does a lot of advocacy, talking to government, engaging government from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, on my part, I think we could do more of that, you know, and then to engage government more. 
you know, to be, so that we we'll, we'll, right now, you see that um, engineers most of the time are not, or, or a lot of times, are not part of the, the uh, policy making, policy making, you know. We, en engineers are the end, you know, at the uh, implementation. Engineers are expected to implement policies that have been made by politicians. So we need government to involve engineers more in making policies. Some of these rules that govern the state, if we were just more involved. For instance, the, in two, uh, 2015, the Nigerian set of engineers came up with what we call the infrastructure scorecard. This, the scorecard was to show the deficit in the infrastructure of, this, of, the, of, the, of the country to show how many, I mean, what are the deficits that we have? Road, infrastructure, the power sector, and all of that. And then with that kind of scorecard, if government could just use it, and that's what is done, being done in most other parts of the, uh, of, the, of the globe. The engineers are relied upon to come up with such things to help government, even in, make, in the budgetary allocations. Okay. Um, does NSC or even current have any form of disciplinary measures where we have um, engineers who are not who don't live up to par? Because mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there was significant deterrence for, as you said, the executors of plans, the engineers. I don't think any one of them would risk losing their operating license. Sure. There, there are there, we, there are policies. There are um, punishments as so to speak. Do you think they, they are strong enough they for are. deterrence? Actually, in the, in the past, Corrine did not have the power to prosecute. But recently, with the latest amendment of the act, we, the Corrine has the power now to prosecute um, erring members. And um, just what, what the, the process is this. If a member for, is found wanted, I mean wanting rather, in, um, in the discharge of his duties or involved in any kind of professional misconduct. A, a panel, an investigation panel is set up, which investigates the, you know, the courses and the, and the process and everything. And then recommendations are made to the tribunal. So NSC has, I mean, sorry, the current has a tribunal that is also where a son, I mean, a senior advocate of Nigeria is also, also present. And then if the, such a person is tried at the tribunal, just like the court, I, I was a member of the, of, of the tribunal recently, and two of our members were, two engineers were tried. Both of them structural engineers, one structural engineer, one civil engineer. And each one of them, ha having been found guilty, was, uh, had his license suspended of, of for what? six months. What, what was the offense? Uh, the the of professional misconduct. One of them uh, was, what he did was, I think he went beyond his scope because one of the ethics of, this, of, the, of the profession is that you only take up jobs that are relevant to you. You don't do anything that is outside your purview. And this particular guy acted as uh, both consultant, he was, he, was, he was the contractor, he was employed by the contractor, but he also did the job of consultant. You know that kind of thing. And then, but many right. don't even know that that's an infraction. Many members of society don't, don't they know They do that. know. Engineers know that. that. Do they get across to the, what, the, the current or NNC? Current has kind of it. Current, if you, once you are registered by current, you, have a, you are given a copy of the Act, you are given a copy of the codes of ethic, or Code of Ethics and okay, Practice. So if a developer was to, to, to embark on a project and it reaches out to an engineer yes. or something, what is supposed to certify that person? How does a developer know that this engineer has, is indeed certified to handle that job? He, he would know. He should, a developer should look for professionals to start with. But, if, you, if you have a job, mm -hmm. it's, your, it's, it's your duty to search for relevant professionals in that area where you want to search. It's like you, you want to employ somebody. You want to employ an engineer or you want to employ a lawyer. You, need, you know the kind of person that you want, so you put up an advert or a bid, and then they come up. So that throws up the, the kind of uh, professionals that you require, mm -hmm. and then you interview them. And, so and, is it database? Whatever. For everybody yes, where you can just is. go and you of type your search, the, current, the name of the person comes up. Sure. And you even know whether the person is, uh, has a current practicing license. That's also very important. Like these two people who were tried by the tribunal recently, they had the, the, current, the, the current practicing license um, suspended for six months, each one of them. Hmm. And there, they could get, it could be heavier depending on the, on the offense. Is there, was there ever a time that any engineer 
I'm sorry. You are an engineer, so we're going to have to come hard on you. Sure. Uh, is there been any time when an engineer was maybe prosecuted or indicted in such a, a case as a collapsed building in Nigeria? So far, we haven't found one. So far. Uh, and, uh, is that but, to but, say but, that but, but, engineers wait, wait are exonerated no, from all no, the... No, no, wait a minute. These two people that I told you about, are actually, one of them, uh, for one of them, or, at, or even both, for one of them, the, there was a collapse. A collapse was involved. It was an, it was an hotel that was being built in Kuala State. And then it's, it's one side of the hotel collapsed, you know, due to negligence. And the, the, the structural engineer on the project was found guilty. One engineer out of all the collapsed buildings in Nigeria. Well, you, you see, that, that is the problem. The, the issue is that in most of all these areas, I mean, the collapses, it's unless we find our members guilty. Really, couldn't, we, we couldn't try them. For these two people, for instance, we were sure. A panel of inquiry was set up, and they were found, and then they were, they were, they were recommended to the tribunal, and they were tried, duly tried, and and found guilty. Mm. What, what, so, kind of, uh, what kind of uh, uh, expectations do you have concerning the panel or from the panel that has been set up by the, by the state government? What, what kind of things do you suggest should be, that, that the panel should be looking for? Well, the, the panel, I'm glad that the panel is being chaired by town planner Tony Aide. You know, he's a seasoned town planner and he's a former commissioner for, I think, urban development or, or environment. And uh, what I expect is that the panel will come up with um, the, the reasons why it happened, starting from um, the structural design, the soil, because the, you know if you don't have, and then that's, where, that's why, why the integrity test that Corinne has recommended for the remaining, the two standing structure comes in. I'm sure that the, the government's panel will also look into that. And they would, I believe that I have faith in the, in the, in the panel. So I'm, I'm sure that they will come up with recommendations on what happened, starting from structural design, the, 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 um, the kind of materials that were used, the quality, and all of that. So for, for those cases where people, uh, you said they were tried and they didn't find anybody guilty, where certain buildings, or is it one part of the building collapsed, what, what kinds of people were culpable in that kind of scenario? No, the, the one, one of the structural, the structural engineer on the, on the project was tried. Okay, so in the cases where the engineers were, you know, uh, not guilty of anything, who were the people that were culpable? Well, we, actually, if we don't even find the engineers, it, it, the, the point now is that in some of those collapses, yeah. the, the engineers are not even involved at all. I mean, oh. engineers who are reg registered engineers are not even involved at so all. So the ones that were masquerading were what, quacks? Yes. We have a lot of that. We, we know, we see, up to now, some people still prefer, would rather use um, the uh, local bricklayers than professional engineers. And that's what we are preaching. And that's why we tell people to, to because this is a loss of not just resources, but lives. So where all that is concerned, everybody needs to know that it is important that at every point in time, if you have a project like that, no matter how little, use professionals. All right, thank you very much indeed, uh, Margaret Guntala, who is an engineer, is a fellow of Nigerian Society of Engineers as a result, also a fellow, Nigerian Institution of Environmental Engineers, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, and Institute of Management Consultants. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. All right.